All right, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we are here today with our partners at DeKalb County to announce uh, about the future of the Atlanta Public Safety Training Center. The Public Safety Training Center will be a vital piece of infrastructure that will serve the training needs of our fire and police departments and be a true community asset to our residents. The facility will be, uh, will be built on City of Atlanta owned property in unincorporated DeKalb County. So we've been working with CEO Thurman and his team at the county uh, as we have developed our plans. Today, I am pleased to report that we have reached an agreement with DeKalb County to issue the construction uh, permits and begin to move the project forward. I'm going to turn it over in a minute to DeKalb County CEO Michael Thurman to discuss a few of the details in the agreement between the city and the county. But before I do, I want to say a few words about the Public Safety Training Center and help to set the record straight about some of the misinformation that's out there. The Public Safety Training Center meets a critical need to train both our fire and our police personnel. And so I've asked Fire Chief Smith and Police Chief Sherbaum to tell you a little bit more about the training uh, needs that they have in just a minute. They will tell you that our current facilities are woefully insufficient to meet the needs of our public safety personnel and the demands of the community that asks for them. The Public Safety Training Center is going to include a variety of pieces of training infrastructure. I won't go through all of it, but there'll be an emergency vehicle obstacle course for fire and police officers to do their driving training, an academy housing for fire and police recruits, a fire department burn building, stables and pasture land to house our mounted patrol horses, a kennel and an indoor outdoor training center for our canine units, and so much more. Uh, since my time on the Atlanta City Council, I have been a major proponent of high quality training and police reforms. I've doubled the funding for our pre-arrest diversions uh, work and helped lead adoption of policing reforms like the eight can't wait measures uh, to help community involvement. The city of Atlanta has the most extensive training requirements in the southeast. Our training includes vital areas like de-escalation training techniques, mental health, community oriented policing, crisis intervention training, as well as civil rights history education. This training needs space, and that's exactly what this training center is going to offer. I know there have been questions about the environmental impact of this project, which is a focus of this agreement we're announcing today with, the, with DeKalb County. The 85-acre facility will be constructed on a set of parcels owned by the city of Atlanta that totals more than 380 acres. The rest of the land, which is a roughly 300 acres, will continue to be green space available to the public. This essentially is a huge park about the size of Atlanta's largest park, and it will be a park that will have a training center on a modest footprint within it. This is Atlanta, and we know forests. This facility will not be built over a forest. The training center will sit on land that has long been cleared uh, of hardwood trees through previous uses of this site decades ago. Arborists have confirmed the existing veget uh, vegetation on this land is overwhelmingly dominated by invasive species like vines and brush, uh, softwoods and weeds. Much of the site contains rubble from the old buildings that were there and asphalts that are covered up uh, old parking lots. The parcel is the original site of the police and fire department's training centers and has been in continual use for outdoor tactical training for Atlanta's public safety agencies for more than 50 years. Our development partner has committed to replace any hardwood tree that will be destroyed in construction with 100 hardwood trees for each one, as well as replacing invasive species with hardwoods. So the site will continue the site will include double erosion control to ensure viability of Entrichment Creek, the main waterway, and the South River Forest Basin. The site itself will have green space open to the public, featuring trails, ball fields, and picnic areas. My administration is aggressively committed to environmental protection. We have been uniquely focused on expanding our protected green spaces in the city. In my first year of office alone, the city of Atlanta and our partners acquired an additional 260 acres throughout the city to be used for parks and green space. 
This announcement we're making today is due in large part to the extensive input from the community that we, re that we received over the last year, uh, year plus through the Community Stakeholder Advisory Committee. This committee includes representatives from neighborhoods in DeKalb County and neighborhoods in Atlanta. These are leaders from the most immediately adjacent neighborhoods who support this project and are actively working to make it even better. Through the engagement with that committee, we have already made several enhancements to our plans, adding a minimum of a 100-foot tree buffer along the residential-facing aspects of the facility, adding additional community uses, including a pavilion and accessible meeting spaces for the community. Moving the, we moved the planned firing range to the southern portion of the site, closest to the industrial part, away from the residential areas. The committee will continue to be engaged to seek input on the project as it develops. This will be a true community center. In fact, we will also use this site to house a community watch training program for our communities. I want to take a moment to thank CEO Thurman for working with us to move this project forward. He is a passionate advocate for his constituents and a trusted partner. He is just as committed to public safety, to the environment, to workforce development, and to our youth as we are here in the city of Atlanta. And I thank him and the county for their partnership, and I invite him to the podium to share a few words about our partnership going forward. Thank you. See you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And let me say to Mayor Dickens and his staff, I want to compliment them uh, for their uh, openness, uh, their honesty, their dedication to working towards, I think, a compromise of a solution that will allow the construction of the Public tra Safety Training Center to move forward, but more importantly, particularly from the perspective of the residents who for decades have invested their money and their time and their, and their lives uh, in that area, we will say, and we are saying to them, that we will protect the neighborhoods, the families, uh, the individuals, and most importantly, we will protect the South River Forest Basin, which is a unique, a unique natural resource. There's nothing else like it inside of 285. And it was our number one priority along with protecting the residents to protect this beautiful, beautiful forest. Uh, I'm encouraged that Mayor Dickens and his staff recognize the importance of doing just that, not just to protect this natural resource, but to enhance it as well. Uh, let me go back for the uh, land development permitting process. I want to say this, the land development permitting process in DeKalb County is a apolitical process. Uh, I was often asked during this time, Mr. Mayor, uh, why can't we speed it up? And some people would ask me, did you make a call? My number one priority was to protect the professionals in our land use planning and sustainability department to protect them from any political interference or public pressure. These are men and women who are professionals uh, they're engineers, and I just want to thank Mr. Marcus Robinson, who's the director, for leading them in a way that this 11-month process uh, that they went through by analyzing the application submitted to us and making sure that we protect the adjacent landowners as well as the South River Forest. I must also acknowledge, I think the mayor mentioned, the Citizen Advisory Committee. Uh, these citizens volunteered their time to advocate on behalf of themselves, their families, and the DeKalb County residents who live within the South River Basin. I especially want to recognize Ms. Allison Clark, who chaired that committee. And they were honest, uh, they spoke truth to power, and as a result of their efforts, uh, we believe that the protections and enhancements uh, went really above and beyond uh, the development policies and procedures of our county. I also want to acknowledge uh, Commissioner Larry Johnson as well as uh, Ted Terry who represent that area. Uh, talked to Commissioner Johnson this morning. He has been an honest broker, an advocate for this community. Let me just mention the five different independent third party reports 
that were generated by our planning and sustainability department that helped and informed them in this process. One, there was a site plan study, grading and drainage plans, stormwater management and hydrology report, an erosion and sedimentation and pollution control plan, a tree protection and replacement plan, a stream buffer variance request, a biological assessment of any critical habitat and endangered and threatened species, and a flood study. This is what informed and shaped our ultimate decision, which was to issue the land development uh, plan. It wasn't politics, it wasn't political pressure. It was objective, professional assessments of the information that was provided to us. The mayor mentioned some of the enhancements that went above and beyond uh, our land development policy. Very much encouraged by this and very much encouraged that our partners will have this training facility. But we know something. The most, I think, impactful crime deterrent is the opportunity to have and maintain honest labor. A major part of the enhancement will encourage uh, contractors who will be working under the direction of the city of Atlanta to hire residents in the community, as well as to access local businesses. Uh, I'm encouraged that the mayor and his staff have reached out to the public school district to create a cadet training program. The most effective crime deterrent ever created is honest labor generated by honest men and women. I believe that by moving forward with these initiatives, more protection for the community, more support for economic growth, sustainable growth, we will be able to accomplish great things. And the last thing I'll mention that this agreement that you will have in your possession will uh, encourage and support, we reached out to the Atlanta Regional Commission, uh, CEO Anna Roach. Uh, this is a multi-jurisdictional natural resource. Although the proposed training center sits on city of Atlanta owned property, the South River Forest actually sits in the city of Atlanta as well as in unincorporated decay. We will be engaging the leadership, the direction, the expertise of the Atlanta Regional Commission to help us develop multi-jurisdictional strategies to manage, uh, to enhance, and protect the South River Forest. Once again, I thank the mayor, I thank his staff, but most importantly, I celebrate the residents of DeKalb County who long before we were called to this moment invested in the South River Basin. They bought the houses, they mowed the lawns, they planted the trees, they loved this community. They were my highest priority to protect their interests, to protect their livelihoods, and to protect this beautiful, beautiful natural resource. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, CEO Thurman. Next, you'll hear from our uh, Atlanta Fire Rescue Department Chief, uh, Rod Smith, who will give you an overview of some of the, uh, you know, the opportunities that we will have for the training center for our fire department. And then I'll bring up Chief Sherbaugh. Chief. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Atlanta Fire Rescue is the largest fire department in the state of Georgia, and we employ over 1,200 members. We are in desperate need of a modern training, uh, training facility for the Atlanta Fire Rescue Department. In fact, we have been operating in a fractured state for over 30 years. Uh, many of you may not know that we have been training our members classroom only in an unoccupied elementary school for a number of years. Matter of fact, I was trained in this school. It has since become condemned. We also do not have a live facility to train our members. The members have had to be bused to DeKalb County. They've had to be bused to Douglasville in order to learn live fire training. This initiative will set Atlanta Fire Rescue apart from its counterparts because we will also gain a public safety driving course. The heavy vehicles that you see running up and down the road, we need places to train and get our members up to a point where they can provide the services that the citizens of Atlanta deserve. So Mr. Mayor, I want to thank you and your administration 
for moving forward with this initiative. It is much anticipated, and we look forward to providing the best services that we can to the citizens of Atlanta. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon, everyone. You know, I want to again thank the mayor for his leadership in this area. Uh, the brave men and women of the Atlanta Fire Department and Police Department, when they respond to your 911 calls, uh, the skill that they have to save a life, to stop a crime, to build community trust does not come with uniform. It comes through training. Realistic, repetitive, first class, 21st century training. And right now, much as this case with Chief Smith, our training is disjointed. Uh, we are renting space at Atlanta Metropolitan State College for our classroom. But for certain aspects of our driving training, which is required, we drive almost one hour south of the city of Atlanta to complete that training. We must rent or borrow space from the Fulton County Training Academy. We must go to neighboring jurisdictions to ask to use their mock training facilities and use their uh, resources that a capital city uh, deserves, that they're the men and women who that protect the city. And when citizens call 911 in 2024 and beyond, uh, they will be reassured that the men and women that are responding to their emergency are not only dedicated men and women that care about that community, they've been trained in the best training facilities that are possible. And training is the heart blood of what we do. It does not come with a uniform. It comes with first class facilities with a dedication to commitment to serve this city. So Mayor, thank you uh, for seeing uh, the importance of training that it is. And we only have to look uh, to the importance of law and enforcement and firefighters to know the success of the Atlanta is tied to that. And so uh, for us to have these facilities, it's going to be a boon in our morale. We will see a boost in our recruitment and our retention efforts. And then every time a citizen of this city is, is, is protected uh, by a member of the fire and police department, they will have been trained in the best class facilities that have been made available to them. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So uh, you heard from CEO Thurman. You heard from me. You heard from the chief. Uh, both chiefs. Um, now I'll take your questions. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, you say this, you say this uh, facility will protect the environment while uh, developing businesses around the area. How will it do that? Yeah, so, you know, again, this is a 380-acre uh, uh, set of land, 385 acres uh, set of parcels of land. And the Public Safety Training Center is going to be on 85 of those acres and 300 acres are going to be protected green space and so uh, that's how we're going to make sure that we uh, have a great uh, green space active use uh, ball fields and things that pavilions a trail etc that people will be able to use and enjoy and so the environment will be protected in that way uh, and as i mentioned the arborist has already uh, given their opinion about the vegetation that is currently on the uh, public safety training center site which as you can see from these photos uh, a lot of this vegetation is uh, weeds and softwood trees and and then on the other side is the actual forest that you can see all of that green space that we're going to protect. Thank Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, will this, will this, will this new facility make possible training you can't do now that will improve use of force outcomes between police and citizens? Yeah, actually, I think I'll let Chief answer that because I can, but I'd much rather Chief be able to oh, talk specifically about your training. Martin, the answer is yes because right now, if we decide we want to hold a certain training regimen, we have to look to neighboring jurisdictions to see if they have space available to accommodate the Atlanta Police Department. So we will no longer be tied to the availability of others' calendar uh, on our training regimen. And if you look around the country at, at terror attacks and active shooter situations, the Pulse nightclub comes to mind. The ability for Atlanta Fire and Rescue to train jointly with their police department is vital. And now we have to schedule around their availability and the availability of another agency to say when can Atlanta Fire and Rescue and Atlanta Police train around these critical incidents. And so we will no longer be tied to that. Our availability to train in the sequence we want to uh, will now rest in our hands. And so this is a good day for public safety for the reason you just pointed out and many others. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to ask you a One question about One other thing, about do you, um, you I wanted to say something about that. I'll get you next. I want to say something also about the emergency vehicle obstacle course. If you think about it, right now, as Chief Smith was talking about those heavy trucks, um, we currently utilize space in shopping malls, uh, old parking lots, and those, in the, those uh, property owners no longer want to allow us there because our trucks are so heavy that sometimes we affect their asphalt and the concrete. So new drivers are learning how to drive a, a ladder truck or an engine on the city streets, and we just can't learn how to do these maneuvers together in the, in the, in the right kind of way. Um, Chief, I don't know if you want to say more about that. No, that's correct. Okay, so yeah, so more. Mr. Mayor, but she, she was next. Yeah, I mean, are having to train at other locations? Yeah. 
And also, is there a commitment that is being made to not develop on the other part of the land? The second part is yes. Uh, we will not. We are making a commitment to not develop on the other side of the land. So the 296 to 300 acres will go uh, protected, so that we won't develop on it. But the question about uh, do we rent space from other people? Right. It usually is dependent on the availability. So it's waiting until they can make it available to us. On rare occasions, we do have to pay uh, to access for certain rental areas. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to ask you about the question. For construction, as well as what other efforts will be uh, used to protect the people, keep them safe, and the property on the site? Ask that again. The timetable for construction and what we'll be doing to keep safe the people and the property on the site. Well, we're taking one step at a time. Today we're getting the uh, land disturbance permit, and we will begin to start talking to our construction partners and just start making a plan to move forward. And, and you'll see uh, as that goes, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that we keep the site safe and that we uh, move forward with construction, uh, uh, making sure that everybody's safe as that process goes on. Mr. 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 I'd like to ask you a question sure. about the Security. advisory committee. Because yeah. um, you've been talking about how uh, its advice uh, in the site planning had been uh, crucial in terms yeah. of its environmental development. Uh, Commissioner Ted Terry in DeKalb County appointed Lily Ponitz, who is a, uh, an environmental engineer, um, who immediately began to raise questions about the site development plan and the environmental uh, studies that had been done. Uh, Allison Clark uh, raised a fit essentially because she was speaking in public and had her removed from the committee. And then the committee began to um, essentially get packed by folks who were uh, unwilling to make public criticisms about the development plan. Given this history of that advisory committee, how much can the public be assured that those committee recommendations were impartial, as, as has been asserted? Yeah, so George, I mean, some of that that you stated was George's opinion and other opinion that were fed to you. I'll tell you that six individuals were selected from DeKalb County and six individuals were selected from Atlanta neighborhoods. And I didn't pay attention to any of it because it was a community-led process. So from that point, I don't know who those people you speak of are and what happened, whatever decisions they made about their internal votes, about who's the leader, who's not the leader, who gets in or out. They set their own rules of engagement. And we're here taking the recommendations to add a 100-foot uh, tree buffer, the recommendations to add sidewalks, the recommendations to have the uh, firing range move further uh, away from the residential area, their uh, uh, hopes and, and aspirations as it relates to the parklands and the ball fields and the community space. All of that input is what I see on the, on the paper here. I don't, I don't know who, who made which suggestion and which, which ones went in and which ones were favored. I just know that it was a community-led process that I didn't actually have any input in. Whatever came out is what's on this paper and what I'm communicating and actually what's in the MOU. Very Thank quick follow-up. Like, like, protesters who called this site an invasion of the police state and the force? Yeah, so, you know, the, the misinformation has gone far enough. This is a fire and police and community training facility. This will be a place where community policing, where collaboration between fire and police uh, can happen, and also where uh, all the things that in 2020, the nation, including this city, uh, including this former city council member, called for additional training, community-based training. This is where that can happen. And so this uh, process will take place, we'll develop this center, There'll be meeting spaces for the community. This is where your community and neighborhood watch programs will, will learn uh, uh, how to uh, keep your neighborhood safe and things that we can do together. This is where we act out uh, the things that we wanted to see in de-escalation de training and community access uh, to the police department and fire department. So I think that um, when you tell the truth about this, this is a collaborative effort as to how the city can then move forward with um, the community-based policing that the community wants. Got time for two more. Mayor, what's the status in the forest right now? Are there still people living in there? How, how is that? Yeah, so I, I don't know exactly what's happening in there right now. We, we did, and, and Chief, I'll let you speak to this in a second. Um, so again, we own 385 acres, and then there's additional land that we don't own. There's other landowners over there from a, a movie studio to uh, other unincorporated areas. So 
individuals that are in the woods, they, they sometimes they're not even on the city of Atlanta's property. So it's not something that I definitely have any direct understanding of. So, um, you know, it, it, I think we went in to be able to, you know, get folks that were in the woods starting fires and there were some tires that were burning and some other things. And so we had to uh, go in there and, and, and ask those individuals to leave. And that was a collaborative process. So I don't know, Chief, do you know what the status is of individuals right now in the, in the um, adjacent forest to our property? Yeah, uh, as of this uh, time, uh, everyone has availed themselves of our request to vacate the area. And we do not believe there's anyone there at this time. And what do you say to those protesters? And have um, did you guys in any way uh, consider their concerns when making this decision? Um, was that part of the negotiations? And what do you say to those who still say this is not enough? The answer is yes, and that's why the community stakeholder uh, group, which is com comprised of actual neighbors and people that actually live in the community, they had the voice that was given to them by their vote of this in this community and they don't live in maine or florida or ohio or somewhere that doesn't have a 404 <laughs> address so these individuals that don't live here they they can peacefully protest as they wish but the vote and the confidence of the community stakeholders that were six from the cab six from atlanta and other individuals that have provided input um that's whose voice we're, we've taken, and uh, and I think you'll see the benefits that the community will receive. Thank you. If I may, lost in this is the official authority to protect the forest and the environment in DeKalb County rests with the DeKalb County government. The land development plan and, and process is primarily a process to protect adjacent landowners as well as the environment. That was why this took 11 months to objectively do the analysis and the research within human uh, understanding to protect that resource. And know this, DeKalb County will continue to be a, a aggressive and engaged steward of the South River Forest. Uh, this is the beginning of a process and not the end. Thank you. 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 Thank you.